In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the reciprocal function family. And what is meant by this is we're going to look at all functions that fall under this inverse relationship idea. So the basic general form of these equations are going to be of the following. So we'll have f of x equaling a rational function with x in the denominator. And then our typical values that we've used in the past will apply. We will have a over x minus h plus k. Now in this we will have a asymptote, an undefined value, where x equals h, and that's an asymptote. And our that will be a vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote will occur where x equals k. And any transformations that happen from the basic function to our new equations will be based on the same general parameters and ideas that have been set forth in previous lessons and units. So let's start looking at how to graph some of these functions as we go through. So we're going to graph f of x equals 2 over x. And we're going to graph on the same grid g of x equals half x. Now to do this we're going to start out by establishing that the scale on this graph is 1 in any direction. And then let's start building our graph. So x and f of x. We cannot put 0 in for so that's going to be a vertical asymptote. But what happens if we put in 1? Well, we're going to get 2 divided by 1, which is 2. What happens if we put in 2? We'll get 2 divided by 2, which is 1. What happens if we put in 4? We get 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half. Notice that the products are always coming out to be equal. What happens if we put in 1 half? Well, 2 divided by a half will actually double the number and will come out with 4. And you start to see the trend of the line. And the reverse is also true. If we put in a negative 1 half, we'll get all these same values just with opposite sign. So we'll have a negative 1 half, negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 4, negative 1 half. So you see we get a graph that comes along like this, has a vertical asymptote, then picks back up where it left off on the other end of the number spectrum like this. Now each of these two pieces are for the same graph and they are what are called branches of the graph. Now we're going to do the same thing for g of x. So again, we have x and g of x values. We cannot put in 0 because that's where our vertical asymptote is. But what happens here if we were to put in 1? Well, half divided by 1 is a half. So we go in 1, come out 1 half. What happens if we put in 2? Half divided by 2 is a quarter. And if we put in 4, Half divided by 4 is an eighth. And we're falling to that asymptote pretty quickly. What happens if we put in 1 half? Half divided by half is 1. What happens if we put in 1 quarter? Well, half divided by a quarter is 2. So you can see we're getting these values. Then, if we were to put in the negatives, we would get the reciprocals. So we're going to end up with negative a quarter, negative two, negative half, negative one, one, uh, negative one, negative one half, negative two, negative one quarter, and negative four, negative one eighth. So drawing in the two branches of this function as smoothly as is possible. 
and then resume on the other side as carefully as possible connecting the points and we see the second one now the relationship between these two is that they do have the same domain the same range they have the asymptotes at the same locations the only change comes in that the graph in blue f of x is a vertical stretch of g of x the values are four times as high for any given x value our standard graph would be in between them with a alpha value an a value in the numerator as one so as we go through the translations that we've seen in the past are going to apply same as you see here the a acts as a vertical stretch and it did stretch or compress our graph if a is ever negative our graph that you see here in quadrants one and three will end up being in quadrants two and four and just as a reminder for those that are a little bit sketchy on the quadrants quadrant one two three and four so if our a value is positive we'll typically be in quadrants one and three if our a value is negative we'll be in two and four but building on these ideas sometimes takes a little bit of time so let's keep up with some practice we're going to look at graphing one that has multiple changes happening when you have a function that involves more than just your a over x the first thing you need to do is establish your new center of the graph and we do that by finding our vertical and horizontal asymptotes now the vertical asymptote is going to occur when our denominator x plus one is equal to zero solving this for x we have x is negative one so at negative one again our scale of our graph is one we have a vertical asymptote next we find our horizontal asymptote which is the k value hanging off on the end so in this case it is negative two so here is the framework for our new graph and you can see basically all we did is we shifted and made a new set of axes and this is a temporary set that will have application for this function type only so now we will build our table of values from here x cannot be negative one but we will go with zero one see where that leaves us so substituting in zero one divided by zero plus one that's one divided by one which is one minus two is negative one so at zero we get negative one substituting in one we have one divided by a half which is one uh, sorry one divided by two which is one half one half minus two is a negative one and a half next nice one that we could work with is substituting in a three so we have one divided by four which is a quarter a quarter minus two is a negative one and three quarters So we end up about here. Next, let's try some smaller values. Let's go with a negative one half. Negative one half plus one is one half. One divided by one half is two. Two minus two is zero. And then if we went negative one quarter, we would have three quarters in our denominator one divided by three quarters is four thirds four thirds minus two is sorry that doesn't work quite out let's go with the negative three quarters that way we're to the left of where we were before negative three quarters plus one is a negative one quarter that is a positive one quarter one divided by a quarter is four four minus two is two so at negative three quarters we will be up at positive two and we start to see the right branch of this now it's not exclusively in quadrant one but considering our new temporary axes that we established this would be quadrant one of that set 
and this is x, h of x. Unfortunately with this, because we had the horizontal and the vertical shifts, we cannot take on simply saying the opposite values are also true. So x, h of x. Let's pick some values to the left of our vertical asymptote. So let's go with negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Minus 2 is a negative 3. So we have negative 2, negative 3 as a point. Let's go with negative 3. That will give us a negative 1 half. Minus 2 is a negative 2 and a half. We're going to come back towards that horizontal asymptote. Now if we go to negative 5, that gives us a negative 1 quarter. Minus 2 is a negative 2 and a quarter. Now if we go the other direction, more towards our vertical asymptote, negative 1 and a half. That will give us a negative half in our denominator, giving us negative 2. Minus 2 is a negative 4. And if we went with a negative 1 and 1 quarter, that would give us a negative quarter. 1 divided by a negative quarter is a negative 4. Minus 2 is a negative 6. And you can see that we now have the right, no, sorry, the left branch of this graph. And it is exclusively in quadrant 3, plus it's in quadrant 3 of our new axes. So when we have h and k values, they simply change and make a new framework for us to build our graph around. The dotted lines for the asymptotes are certainly helpful for helping to draw this out. Now, how do we go from a basic function and rewrite it into the trans? So if I rewrite the function shown below, m of x equals 1 over x, with a vertical stretch of 2 and asymptotes at x equals 1, and y equals negative 4. What would this look like? So just for the sake of argument, we're going to do a quick sketch. We're going to have a horse, an, an asymptote at x equals 1. So at 1 we're going to have an asymptote. And then at y equals negative 4, we're going to have another asymptote. So what causes this to happen? Well, our vertical asymptote happens when our denominator is zero. So in order to make our denominator here zero, if x equals one, then we need to take and put a minus one in our denominator. So that will shift it uh, to the right one. In order to get our horizontal asymptote, that occurs at our k value, so y equals negative 4 is our k value, so we have a minus 4 out here on the right. Then a vertical stretch of 2 happens for our a value of 2. We are going to take this and multiply our numerator by 2. So our transformed function is going to look like m of x equals 2 over x minus 1 minus 4. So being able to move back and forth from the transformed function, write the equation, from the equation, be able to draw the transformed function, both skills are very needed. And as we move forward in, chap in unit 8 with rational functions, all these will start to play out and having our change of domain having an effect will become very important as well.